47 years ago, Teresa Trenny Gibson disappeared in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Teresa woke up early on October 8, 1976 in order to get ready for school because she had a long bus ride ahead of her. The junior in high school took horticulture, and the class had arranged a field trip to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Her wish on this day was for her high school field trip to the National Park to be canceled, even though her long-term goal was to study landscape architecture at the University of Tennessee. She and her father had talked about their shared concerns about the upcoming trip a few days prior. Trenny didn't dress for a day hike since she was so sure the weather would cancel her trip. Rather, she went for an all-blue look with a blue top, pants, a pastel blue sweater with stripes, and blue Adidas sneakers. Trenny also donned a $600 sapphire and diamond ring that day. She purchased it for herself using the money she had made from her summer job at Morrison's Cafeteria. Nothing that day told her as she left for school that it would be the last she would ever be seen. Trenny Gibson might have thought the field trip would be canceled when she arrived at Bearden High School that day. It was confirmed that it would indeed go forward. After boarding the bus, students were informed by their teacher, Mr. Dunlap, that they were all traveling to Clingman's Dome and the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. This unexpected news pleased them and Trenny sat in the back of the bus with a friend named Robert Simpson. He was a close friend of Trenny's brother Bob, who was on leave from the Navy and who had graduated the previous May. Trenny had never been away from her family for even a whole day when Bob asked Robert to watch over her that day on their trip. October 8, 1976 was a cold and rainy day at Clingman's Dome the highest point in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. The bus arrived at the park around noon and parked in the Clingman's Dome lot. Mr. Dunlap gave the students instructions to hike to Andrews Bald and back to the bus by 3.30 p.m., stopping along the way to observe the plants, trees, and flowers. They were also told not to go farther than Andrews Bald, take any side trails, and not to interfere with any plant life. The students had to raise their hands to indicate they understood, and then they were off. The kids made their way towards Andrews Bald, while the bus driver remained in the Clingman's parking lot. Upon reaching the trail, the Bearden High School students divided into smaller groups based on their walking speeds. In addition to the bus driver who had remained in the parking lot, there was only one instructor supervising the large number of students. They ate their sandwiches and socialized, enjoying themselves. Trenny wore only jeans, a shirt, and a sweater, so Robert had lent her his brown and orange plaid wool jacket. On their trip to Andrews Bald, he and Trenny went together. Upon arriving to Andrews Bald, Trenny and Robert took a seat and had lunch. Robert wanted to stay at the Bald a little while longer, but Trenny indicated she was ready to start the journey back to the bus. Thus, Trenny embarked on her own journey while donning Robert's jacket. She walked down a somewhat steep trail with sharp drops and thick vegetation on both sides. Trenny strolled briskly along the Forney Creek Trail, catching up with other groups of students and passing them by after a short while. Trenny had been approached by the last party to spot her, and they had encouraged her to sit with them while they rested, but she had turned them down and continued on her way. Later on the route, they noticed Trenny stop and crouch down. She seemed to be staring at something off to the right of the route before turning off and heading downward to the right. After a short while, one of the females from the group who had just seen Trenny noticed that there was nowhere to go when she looked at the location where Trenny had departed the trail. There was a tiny brook, ferns, boulders, and dense undergrowth off the trail. No other trail was evident. When she called Trenny's name, she received no answer. The girl asked a male student who was walking down the trail if he had seen Trenny, but he hadn't. They continued, figuring she would be waiting for them at the bus. The students returned to the bus in the Clingman's Dome parking area about 3.30 p.m. Robert Simpson was questioned by a student if he had seen Trenny as she hadn't returned to the bus. Robert reported that he and Trenny had trekked to the bald, but that after she left to head back to the bus, he opted to use some of his time to track a bear. No one had accompanied Robert on a trip back down the Forney Creek Trail so no one could verify his account. While the other students waited on the bus, Wayne Dunlap and a fellow student hiked the trail where Trenny was last seen. 
after they got back and determined that Trenny was really missing, he called the National Park Service at 4.30 p.m. and filed a report. Shortly after, the bus returned to Knoxville without Trenny or Mr. Dunlap. Dunlap stayed to help with the search. When the school bus finally arrived, it was later than expected, and upon its arrival, the Gibson family was informed by school officials that their daughter was missing. After returning from a work trip to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Robert Gibson and his wife Hope moved swiftly, making their way to the Smoky Mountains to await word about their daughter. Nineteen volunteers had assembled in the evening to start the search for the missing student. The trail was popular with walkers, so it was odd that she vanished so quickly considering that she had been with others, that groups of students had been in front of them and behind them, as well as more hikers. A massive aerial and ground search of the park was to ensue. That night's conditions for searching were challenging due to wind, fog, and heavy rain. The fall foliage made visibility challenging, and the hoarfrost, which is a type of feathery frost that forms as a result of specific climatic conditions, made the ground slick. A searcher broke multiple ribs after slipping and falling. Ground searchers and helicopters were dispatched. Trenny was looked for by around six dog teams consisting of German Shepherds and Bloodhounds. At the intersection with the Appalachian Trail, three tracking dogs detected her scent. They pursued it past Klingman's Dome Tower. Some of the dogs last detected her scent a mile and a half from Newfound Gap. By that time, the scent had vanished, so the dogs stopped. Four days after Trenny vanished, on October 12th, the official search team reduced the number of participants to roughly 20. The hunt was conducted through November 1st, 1976. A second search conducted in the park between April 18th and May 5th, 1977 turned up no evidence of remains. Reporters were informed by the chief ranger that he was almost positive she was not in the park. In 1981, searchers returned to the Klingman's Dome location, but they found nothing. Trenny's belongings, including her pocketbook, checkbook, makeup, clothes, and cash, were all abandoned. Her bank account, which was left untouched, held over $1,000. The dog's trail to a nearby road supported the theory that she had been kidnapped. With so many hikers nearby, though, would someone involved in foul play wait in the bushes on a steep slope off the trail? According to some reports, there were cigarettes and a beer can in the area of the road. Robert Simpson, the fellow student who walked with Trenny the day she disappeared, was allegedly a suspect at one point but was never charged. Trenny carried a thick, large Stanley comb with her everywhere. It was made specifically for long hair. Her sister had one too. Trenny's comb was always with her. Robert Simpson was using the comb for his own hair when it was discovered on the dash of his car after she vanished. When Robert was questioned, he revealed that he had seen it and that Trenny had handed him the comb to keep for her. When Trenny vanished, she was wearing a ring and a pendant made of star sapphire that were birthday and Christmas gifts. They were found in the possession of a girl at Bearden High School in the sophomore class. She was unable to provide a convincing explanation for how she got them. In October 1975, a young man attempted to break into the home of Robert and Hope Gibson. As a result, the parents reported the incident to the authorities. A student from Bearden High, Kelvin Bowman, had broken into the Gibson home. After Hope shot him in the foot, he was charged and given a juvenile detention facility sentence. Despite receiving a two-year sentence, he only completed about half of it, returning to Bearden High by the time Trenny vanished. During his hearing, he had threatened to hurt Trenny when he was released from juvenile facility. Principal Frank Hall verified that on the day Trenny vanished, Kelvin Bowman was at school attending classes. When Trenny's parents were waiting for word on their daughter in the park, Robert Simpson stopped by the Gibson home. To Trenny's younger sister, Tina, he said two odd things. He said that, if Kelvin Bowman has Trenny, he will kill her. If he does not have her, I think she must have run off with some horny hitchhiker. According to one theory, Trenny was brought to the observation tower of Klingman's dome and detained there either willingly or against her will while the area was investigated. At the time, no investigation was conducted into the tower itself. She was then driven to the side of the road and abandoned by a car after the searchers departed. In a late November 2017 interview, 
Kim Pouncey, a friend and classmate, expressed her suspicion that Trenny may have just wished to leave the park by herself, saying, My feeling is, somebody was waiting for her, in the park. There was a parking lot very close. I've always felt like Trenny planned it, and that was her way out. Do you think Trenny just left on her own, or was she taken? I am not sure what to think. How can it be that nobody saw her on the trail? Did she just vanish in thin air? Let me know what you think in the comments.